Good evening, folks. Alien Addict here, and we have my old friend from school, Darren, or as I, I call him, Daz. Daz, how are you on this fine, luxurious evening? On this red hot day? Yeah, I'm delighted to be here, mate. Oh, can I just correct you there? Because you said to my old friend, you could have just said to my friend, but no, but you it, went with old. Yeah, but we're the same age. We've just been saying that, you know, we're <laughs> age. Yeah. we look good we look good yeah i'm um, glad to be here mate the, well the reason why you are here is because you've got a game coming out very oh. soon and it's right up any paranormal alien lovers streak i hope so yeah it's a bit about your company i can the company tayana studios uh is a little uh, husband and wife team uh, comprised of myself and oddly enough my wife uh, and we've made a little what's called an FMV game which stands for full motion video uh, sci-fi thriller set well, I don't want to say too much but it's uh, yeah it's got some otherworldly otherworldly uh, going ons otherworldly goods yes that's a better I, I should have said that yeah that's better you, you tell it better than me I'm rubbish uh, well I thought I, I said to you the other day, which is quite, which I think it probably pisses you off a little bit because people are asking you. I said, "Are you a Pink Floyd fan?" Everybody says it. Obviously, Dark Side of the Moon, obviously, but I'm actually not. I'm not a massive oh god. It's like, oh, turn it off, not watching it. This guy, but no, I'm. A, I'm not like I'm not a fan. You know, I just I don't mind the music, but I'm not a huge fan. But yeah, I actually had to look into that about the whole copyright issue. You know, about is that. Because obviously the album, well, uh, the dark side of the moon, the dark side of the moon. Unless you believe some of the conspiracy theories that, wow, <laughs> that the moon doesn't this... actually exist, <laughs> <laughs> or it's hollow inside. I, I don't know. We could talk about this stuff. But so no, you're, it... you're <laughs> making the dark side of the moon a, an FMV game. Um, yeah. And can you tell us a little bit without giving too much away? Because uh, you know, I don't want you spoiling for anybody who's gonna. Uh, you know, because oh, there's a lot of gamers out there. Me for one that don't like a game fully ruined, and obviously it's your game, so you don't want <laughs> you don't want to let it go at once. Yeah, that would make me look pretty stupid. Just give everybody the ending, for example, right now. But uh, yeah, yeah, quick breakdown, quick uh, plot line is: a single father, uh, Dean, wakes up one morning. His two young children have just vanished throughout the night. He, has, he basically goes on an investigation, uh, makes a new special friend along the way, and together they basically go investigating and they realise that something isn't quite right. That's all I can really say without giving too much away. It's not a typical abduction case, let's put it that way. But I think, of course, with the, with the fans of your channel and what the title of the game is, I think they can put two and two together and realise it's something to do with the moon. The dark side. The dark side thereof, yes. So... How, how long has this taken? Uh, from the idea, I'd say about two and a half, three years ago when the when the seed was in my head. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, the reason this game came about in the first place was because of my fascination with this subject, what we're here to discuss. Uh, well, sorry to interrupt, but this is exa I said to you the other day, I said, I said Daz, uh, I, I really want to get you on and discuss the game. And you went, no, fuck that. I want to talk about aliens. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love all this stuff. I really do. But I said, no, you can promote your game first. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Get it out of the way. Yeah. But no, I, I really think that especially, I mean, I'm, when I saw this and it's not just because you're an old friend from school, because I only found this out through, school, through yeah. the friend, um, Adam, who's making the music for the, yeah. for the game. Um, but yeah, it's, it looks fantastic. And Thank you. Thank you, mate. And like you've said, I can put some clips up, which I will probably be Go doing now. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, the budget. I mean, it, what can you? What sort of budget were you working with? Well, this is, is the interesting thing. It's, it started off as a, an idea, which this game was originally just going to be made with a camcorder, a home camcorder, typical home camcorder, a few friends, and it pl- I had it planned that it would take a week or two to write and another month or two to film, another three or four months on top of that to code and put together. Uh, that was just under two years ago. A lot happened in terms of we, we decided to start a Kickstarter, which did quite well. Uh, I say quite well. We we just had a target of a thousand and a half to get a decent professional uh, camera to use, uh, sound equipment, lighting, all that stuff that's needed. Uh, and then we got. We, I was playing some FMV games myself, and I thought, you know, I like this actor, I like that actress. I'm just out of curiosity. I wonder how much they would charge for a couple of days filming. So I contacted them, uh, and we got talking. We're very close friends now, and. Uh, yep, they turned up, and the game got bigger overnight. It wasn't as small and contained as it originally was. It got a l- much, much more epic, to be fair, without sounding like I'm talking it up. It's, it became a lot bigger than it originally was intended. But the budget overall, if you want a ballpark figure, we're just talking a couple of thousand. But it, well, I mean, we were just been speaking before, but literally you've been working till like three in the morning. Yeah, uh, yeah. Just- just just with the editing alone. That's it. It's getting to the point now where I'm not sure half of the time if I'm actually dreaming. Like, this could be fake. Right? I could be asleep right now. This might not be happening. You know, you know when you get that tired, your mind starts playing tricks. Uh, yeah, it's it's because I work part-time doing web design, graphic design, just to keep some pennies coming in, as we mentioned earlier, like you said. And so I, I need to do that to keep the money coming in. And I also need to work on the game. So like you say, I'm working till 3, 4 in the morning. I'm getting up at 6, 7, then after a few hours sleep, and it's back to square one i'm exhausted i'm work i'm literally running on fumes at the moment so so games like this uh, for me i i think this is a this is the type of game that not just somebody that maybe isn't an actual gamer can pick up and play because it, it is it's almost if anybody has not played an fmv game they they play like uh, it is a movie but you make all yeah. of the decisions of the movie, so it is a it, and it gives you that. Yeah, it, it, you you make all the decisions. Of yeah, that. and that affect, that affects the outcome and the overall story. It's, it's, it's an interactive movie. It's another uh, name for it, I suppose. FMV interactive movie are basically two. They're very similar, but they're not quite the same. Uh, Bandersnatch. I don't know if you remember that on Netflix uh, around about a year back now or so. Uh, do you remember that? Uh, that was Netflix's first experimentation, I believe, with the, the interactive movie genre where the, the audience could control the player's decisions, uh, the, the actors, the main character's decisions, uh, which affected the outcome of the story. Uh, and that's an interactive movie. FMV is very much, in my case, I seem to have combined the two. It's an interactive movie with FMV elements. And by FMV elements, I mean you've got the uh, the aspects of your typical game where you can use objects much like a point and click game like monkey island or broken sword where you can the character can pick objects up throughout and use them later on to get himself out of a sticky situation for example so yeah i seem to somehow combined the genres i think i've created a sub-genre that hasn't actually been done before it on what i've seen on your youtube channel with with all the clips oh yeah i've i've never seen anything quite like this no and that wasn't the i think it's a happy accident because that wasn't the original idea to go and of course i wanted to break the mold slightly with this game and not do something that's been done a thousand times before but this whole because of the gameplay of the the gameplay style it's yeah like i said it's created its own sub genre it's become something else that i didn't really intend but it's, it's working really well for it 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 must be um to decide how many different scenarios you can take and how that's going to progress the game in different ways. Yeah. It's, it's, how, it's, how do you get your head around that? You don't. <laughs> you don't. Even now it's done. It's still, when it comes to the coding process, right, there's, we call it branching. You know, like the player can make two or three choices at a given point in the, in yeah. the interactive movie. And of course, these stories all branch off, like you say, into different ways. Well, how come? There's always got to be what's called an uh, an A story, which is the main story. So they yep. might branch off, but sometimes those branches all creep back to the main story, the main thread again. 
and then it'll branch off again, maybe further down the line. But there's always got to be an A story. An A story. Otherwise, you're going to be filming about I don't know sixteen thousand hours worth of footage. You know, for all these possible outcomes. But uh, it works well. We've played through it now, and it works well. And it's I'm really proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 acting in the game looks just spot on, and you're actually in the game. <laughs> I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I did that if you noticed. Well, um, yeah, but you you've been into this subject. Um, see, I know this. Yeah, I, know, uh, I think I know what you're going to say. Since we were we we we, we kids, I can yeah. remember your kind of Friday night the third Friday night thirteenth Friday uh, thirteenth yeah. the horror films that you used that you used to make. I knew you were going to bring this up. I'm waiting for it. Yeah, you were in one of them. Do you remember that? I, I, yes, I was one. <laughs> yeah, I thought you knew. I thought that's why you brought it up. Do you still have it? God, no. I ain't got a clue where that is now. <laughs> Although, actually, I think I might. Hey, I if, think if I might on some old 8mm tapes. I'll have to have a look. <gasps> I don't know if it's a special edition. Who would see that then? <laughs> Say again. I don't even think I'd started puberty, even though I should have done <laughs> I was probably like 16. <laughs> I think we filmed about, we spent like a whole weekend, if you remember. I think we filmed about three minutes of the film over a weekend and that were it. Never never even completed it. Yeah. But it was just a fun, it was just a fun experience, wasn't it? I remember that. So, so who's the actors you've got on board with the new film, well, with, new, with the new game, sorry? <laughs> We've got uh, Anna Rosa Butler, who's playing Alex. Uh, she's the computer genius. Uh, I don't want to say nerd or geek, you know, like she's a computer genius who helps Dean uh, overcome his technical uh, issues he seems to have. That's a, one of Dean's, the main character, it's one of his traits that is useless with technology. Uh, she helps him. She's basically, she's basically us, Oliver. She's basically that, uh, you know, confident that the government's hiding things from the public deliberately, you know, and all this stuff. Uh, and we've also got uh, Rupert Booth as well, who plays Gideon. The big bad guy, and he, he, he scary. Is, yeah, he is his scenes. You know, I'm sure he won't mind me telling you because I'm sure he's mentioned it before in an interview. Uh, he was filming his scenes, and there's some scenes where he had to shout at my character, and he's screaming and being so evil because he's a professional actor. Yeah, and he's like, we'll film for about an hour or so. All right, cool. Okay, that's brilliant. You nailed it. Brilliant. And he had to go outside for a cigarette, and he's shaking. He's, he's, he's I, I don't, I didn't like that. I was, what, what you're acting? Because no, I just don't like hearing my, or seeing myself like that because he had to be that evil and say such awful things it, it upset him yeah so it is going to be very gritty and you know it's, it's, do you know i don't think gritty is the right word i describe it as and you might think what but i think it might make sense to somebody like right imagine uh, a cross between uh, I say this across between Emmerdale, not Emmerdale, sorry, Emmerdale. <laughs> the Americans, the Americans are like, what the hell is Emmerdale? Uh, imagine a cross between a UK uh, cop drama, yeah, uh, and uh, an American sci-fi show such as Star Trek, for example, or Stargate. Um, it's those two combined. So it starts off like a drama. It's like from Dust Till Dawn, you know, where it suddenly just shifts gears into a totally different genre. It's very much like that. And I'm probably giving too much away. Yeah, talking about this, but yeah, it, Rupert remind uh, Rupert reminds me like uh, he, he could be like the next Doctor Who or something. You know, he, 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 <laughs> has anybody else said that to you? Geo is going to love that. Yes, they have. Everybody uh, is making he's, a he's, great Doctor Who. It would. He's a massive, ironically, as well as a massive Doctor Who fan. He it's, knows them all. The classic Who's, the new Who's, off by heart. He's, he's the world's biggest Doctor Who fan. I'm sure. Uh, yeah, the, uh, first thing I said uh, when he first came over to film, we were. My daughter and son were massive Matt Smith Doctor Who fans. And at the time, Rupert came over, and I think Peter Capaldi... and Yeah, Peter Capaldi after Matt Smith, weren't he? Uh, I think Peter, uh, Matt Smith had just generated into Peter Capaldi, and Rupert came round. And he'd said to me beforehand, we're talking about Doctor Who. I said, oh, my kids love Doctor Who. I like Doctor Who. And he goes, I goes, Annalise loves Matt Smith. She loves him, my little little girl. I was in the game as well, as well, herself. And he goes, do you want me to... Because he could do a smashing impression of Matt Smith. And he came round uh, for the first time. We are all like, yay, Rupert, see, this is unreal. And he's saying to Annalise, hello. You know, like Matt Smith would, or a combination of David Tennant and Matt Smith, kind of. Yeah. You know, just, he's, he's got that magic of Doctor Who. He's, do you know what I mean? He's, he would make a great Doctor. 
I can, def- really I can definitely see it after watching some yeah. of the clips. What I mean, I know ab- about you, Daz, but can you let the viewers? I didn't actually know how much this has stayed with you, though. It stayed with me from being very young. But can you take us way back to what's got you into this subject and what's made you want to make this game? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I've always had this interest from being a little kid, uh, just telling stories, you know, just fantastical stories that wouldn't really happen in real life. You know, it's escapism. That's the idea of a movie or a game to escape life. And I, I've always had this passion for writing stories. I don't know if you remember, I'm getting a bit private now, but, that, uh, you know, only me and you know, like high school, we used to, we joined that comic book club. Do you remember that? Vaguely. Very yeah, yeah, me and you, we were always talking there, we were always drawing away, because the idea of creating stories, creating these fictional worlds, these characters that interact with each other, and, you know, I've always been like that since since I reckon the computer uh, design coding side of it started, believe it or not, uh, when I was five years old, the old Spectrum Plus 2, do you remember that? I, I had a, a, a St. Clair Spectrum, I uh, don't know which, which model it was, but I had a Spectrum. 81 or Plus 3, probably, but... Uh, the, yeah. the one that sounded like it was uh, it was going to explode when it was left. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I started uh, working on uh, well, working at five years old, but just tinkering about, tinkering about with code, uh, and just making my own little games, really little simple games, like a little block just moving and jumping over something, or you know, silly little things. And but as a kid, I realised that wow, if you can do things like that, what else can you do? If you push that boundary even further, what else can you actually do? And of course, as technology advanced. Like we look at us now with the, the, the you know the software the tools we've got easy access to at home. We, this software we have now, Adobe After Effects, for example, you know, thirty years ago, as kids, we wouldn't be able to have dre- dreamt of anything like that. Is you that know, what you built most of the the game? The on? special of, the special effects scenes are done with After Effects, yeah, and a lot of three D uh, composition with the green screen stuff, uh, as you see. And there's they're the bits where you asked me earlier, where is that? Is that on a spaceship? Uh, it yeah, and of course, as technology has advanced, I've just combined the two, and I just thought it wasn't, and this is why I felt stupid, I mentioned this in another interview recently, where I thought, why the hell has it taken me so long, So I've always loved making films as well, why the hell has it taken me so long to combine the two and make an FMV game? <laughs> do you know what I mean? I know, how to com- I know how to code, I know how to film, basically, you know, I know how to do all this stuff, why don't I combine them? So Dark Side was born, after I've been watching, of course, the uh, documentaries, you know, all this stuff about aliens and the idea, the initial idea came from the, the fact that one of the documents, well, not just one, it's mentioned on a load of them, uh, where the theory is, and which is which is actually one I truly believe, that there are bases on the dark side of the moon. And that's where the idea came from. It just stemmed from there and just built and grew. So in in this this world that you've, you, that you've created, yeah. um, how much of this... Uh, no, let me reword that. Your character that you play, how hey. much of your character is 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 it is any of that character you? Yes, he like, is. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> well, is me in terms of the? Uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to get personal. I'm gonna have to open up a little bit now. Is me in terms of the fear of uh, of being alone, or you know, having a, a big nightmarish situation thrown up obviously people through life and all what's life have situations in life that are a complete nightmare that they wish never happened and it's that's one of my fears you know and but the side of alex was you know when you write for a character i was writing for me when i wrote for her mainly because she was coming out with all the uh conspiracy theories and you know the the facts of aliens and the moon and you know and all these cover-ups and that was me that was just my personal beliefs the character of alex actually says a lot of things in there that is purely just my belief. She states them as fact. You know, I might have put a little uh, waiver at the beginning of the game, you know, saying this is a work of fiction, just in case people get offended. Because yeah. it does, unfortunately, do I suppose. Days. You what? You probably will do these days. You know? Exactly, this is what I'm getting at. I, I wasn't even joking, I'm just considering there. doing that. Snowflakes. But, uh, yeah, it touches upon the aspect of religion as well. Uh, quite briefly, but it's there, which might offend somebody, because it's... It's basically my beliefs. And people say, you know, write about what you know. Not out to offend anybody. That's the least 
that's that's the last thing I'm trying to do. But it's just my personal beliefs of what's going on in the world and what's going on out there. So, so you made this game on your actual. So anybody that's playing this game, this is Daz's beliefs. This is what Daz believes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a couple of elements in there which, are just for the sake of entertainment, you yeah. know, like such as. Uh, the images of the dark side of the moon, what it might look like, of course, that's fiction. Nobody yeah. truly knows, it, at least I don't think. Uh, so, of course, things like that are just a work of fiction, but that, that that's the fantastical elements of, you know, that's where the, the Hollywood-esque kind of vibe comes in, where you can have over-the-top special effects and stuff. But, yeah, a lot of it is my personal beliefs, yeah. So, we, we've only just kind of got in touch recently, and it's yeah. been uh, probably since we were... 16 or something like that, I don't know how many. Yeah, exactly. so about four years ago. Yeah, <laughs> uh, have you how, how have you progressed in, in terms of um maturity? I haven't, no, no, oh, no, I was gonna say, well, yeah, no, none of us have there, mate. <laughs> um, but in what you've been looking into, what have you seen anything paranormal? Yeah. Yes, I have, and this is one. So the only people who know about this, are my, my good wife, and uh, my best friend, and it's not. It's something. It's, I suppose it's usually the case where you don't really tell people in case you just you can be laughed out of the room. You know, it's, it's that's ridiculous. I watched. Jump to her. Jump to her. This. Yeah, stuff. definitely. This is what this channel's about. <laughs> yeah, well, it would make sense for me to describe this. Uh, <laughs> probably the worst guest ever yeah, right uh, by the way it's a great t-shirt oh hey Lots. you guys it's uh yeah it was and this is the thing I, I don't i don't know for sure if it was a figment of my imagination or if it indeed did happen but it, it's one of those where it felt so bloody real uh i've been watching this is the thing what I, this is the reason why I doubt it. I've been watching some documentaries on aliens, and one of the theories in this documentary I was watching was somebody saying, and you probably know about this yourself, that, you know, the, the, well, you know, they the apparently communicate uh, telepathically. You know, you don't need to speak to them physically, uh, vocally. And they said you can communicate just by looking. A human being can go outside into the back garden, stare at the skies, and just put some thoughts out there. And this theory was that if you do it often enough, uh, and believe in what you're doing and you know and, and be strong-minded and do this eventually if you for example ask them to come and visit they will over time uh and that's basically where this story is going but I, I i've been watching this and i went to bed and i've been doing this for for weeks just the kind of guy i am outside having a cigarette just looking at the sky sending my thoughts up there thinking you never know uh went to bed this night Woke up because I could sense something at the bottom of the bed. I woke up thinking it was one of the kids walked into the uh, into the bedroom, uh, and there was three figures, grey, uh, the grey alien figures. But I was half asleep, sort of blurry, uh, trying to adjust my eyes. My instant reaction was just to go into a state of shock. Uh, the covers went straight over my head, muffled screams, head into the pillow, screaming. Uh, the it felt like I was screaming forever. The wife had to do you remember this. She sat next to me. Uh, the end of the story, and I woke up, and she's, what's wrong? And I'm stuttering, I'm terrified. Uh, yeah, and I went downstairs, had a cup of tea, and never happened again. But that's my experience. But you probably see why I'm thinking it could be just a figment of imagination, you know, waking up, and you know, we've all done it, where you wake up and see a coat on a door, which oh my god, it's somebody stood at the bottom of the yeah, bed. Yeah, many you times. Know. But these three figures, and I remember it vividly. It just seems so real. You know, the, the typical grey looking. What you could see the eyes. It was very. It was very. I just opened my eyes, so I kind of just adjusting. But I just remember the shapes, the long, spindly, you know, arms and the big, oblong heads and featureless, really, because it was just dark. You had a, I'd, I'd, I'd one or two of these, have you? That night, no, no, I hadn't. But yeah, this is it's one of those things. Where I think it probably was just my imagination because of what I've been watching previously. No, no, I don't think that. But it just, it just felt so. Yeah, I, I must have interviewed now um, three or four people on the channel. I won't name them because then the the, the people I think are bullshitting <laughs> will know who they are. <laughs> but but they have spoke of similar things yeah. where you know they have seen, and it's usually something that comes to the room 
Yeah. I, I myself have had a very similar situation, um, and I thought it was a ghost. And I jumped out of bed, and my my wife was just looking at me because I, I jumped that hard that I, she she doesn't she wakes up at the slightest thing. Mine's the same. And I'm not sure interview, mate, but I'm just backing you up here, my no, brother. Yeah, no, this is good. I don't sound <laughs> as crazy anymore. Carry on. And there was something on. It was, I think it was sat on the bed. I don't know. There was something there. I haven't even said. I've not even spoke about this on the channel. But you know, I, we, we 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 go back a long way. Um, and I said to my wife, no, sorry, my wife was like what's wrong what's wrong and i said it's okay uh, there's something in the room and she's like you're freaking me out and i said no it's okay it's it i, I use the word it's nice okay That's what i said well that Not, for her benefit or is that what you believed i don't remember i don't remember it i just i i, I remembered literally saying it's nice oh so yeah i do remember saying it's nice but i don't remember if it was nice or anything like that, I, all I all I know is I told my wife she, it was nice, mm. and I literally went back to sleep and wow. left her freaked out. Wow, uh, very similar situation. Because I wouldn't do that either. I, yeah. I normally, because if she's scared, I would normally say, "Sorry, calm down." But she, the next morning, she's like, "Do you remember?" that and i was like oh kind of what like a dream you know i thought it, yeah. was, it wasn't a dream i jumped out of bed and and i do vaguely remember seeing something yeah but i don't i couldn't say if it was gray looking i just know it was a figure i don't know how i knew it was nice you see that's yeah that's quite odd that you should say that it's as if you knew yeah. yeah, maybe it, maybe it goes to the tele. Maybe it's, it links, uh, you know, to the tele uh, telepathy where the, where they are saying. Don't I've had a few people right, on chill out. speaking about dark figures, and oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Coming yeah. apart, you know. So yeah, I I, I I totally think there is something in there. And what you were explaining, I think, what you've been watching is uh, my good friend Doctor Stephen Greer. He doesn't know who I am, but. <laughs> <laughs> I've used his name enough times. Yeah, but yeah, like that, like yeah. that. He he does the. Um, he do, I think he people pay a lot of money to go out and yeah, viewing just people yeah. how to it, see. It, it usually outside. Uh, usually not all the time. Believe we're outside of Area Fifty One, but uh, yeah, I think it might be. I think you might be right there. I yeah. think it might have been. I think that. some of them might be flares that he's got his mate shooting up on a boat, but. <laughs> His mates are shooting up. In that line was. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so, so the, but you didn't see a UFO. No, just the uh, three figures. Yeah. Uh, have you ever seen anything in the sky? You know, not not really. Not nothing that I can I can see something. And think well, that could be this. So therefore, I just dismiss it. You know, if I can give it a reasonable explanation as to what it could be, then I usually just let it go. There's no point. Because I'll never know, you know, so there's no point dwelling over that. But uh, I've never had a, a full-on experience of you. I, I've I've seen I've seen lights in the sky. Um, I've I've seen stuff in the corner of my eye and think something just shot off there. But it's always in the it's always in my the corner of my eye. Mm. So it's never. For some reason, I've you asked me and I said no. I've filmed it... one. Filmed one. Have you? That's on the channel, but somebody debunked it for nine hours and said it was balloons. <laughs> for nine hours? Yeah, for nine hours. Wow. A, a very good friend of mine. <laughs> You've got a lot of good friends. <laughs> there was... Uh... He hates me. He hates me. <laughs> there was... You asked me, have I seen any... You? I said, no. There was one at my old house. How long ago were it? My wife's here, like I said. About six, seven years ago now? At the old house. Uh, we're all... And hundreds of people... In in fact, you might uh, you might remember this yourself, Ali. Because uh, you can cut that. It's but, yeah. nice uh, give your address and your credit card details out. Come and get some. <laughs> hey, but yeah, Jember, it must have been six, seven years ago where that massive uh, sonic boom—that's what it got explained away as a sonic boom in the sky. 
Over, yeah. There's a video of me yes. reporting it where, where it happened. It shook my entire house. Yeah, same. We thought a wardrobe had fallen down upstairs or something. A big clatter. Went outside and it got explained as a sonic boom. Uh, there are two conflicting stories in the media, if you remember. One, that it's a Russian Russian plane and one, that it's a French plane or something. Yeah, they said a French plane went off track. Yeah. Uh, this was re- reported on Secure Team 10 as well. That's a uh, a big... Yeah. Well, was a big channel. It, it, it yeah. seems to be quiet now. Um, but, um, yeah, this... Apparently, uh, a French uh, aircraft... Um, I think they they was trying to get in, in contact with it and it it wasn't responding and it was going it was it was going on a different course so they scrambled two um, two jets to it and that's why we heard the sonic booms. Do, do you believe that? Um, because I don't. What I heard, I don't believe that one bit. And the next day, I, 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 if you know about this, I'm, it, I might still be online. This information. Uh, it will bug me. Is. Yeah, no, there, there is, there, there is a. I don't know if it, people know about this. I'll link the, I'll link the avid, r- original video actually where. Yeah, I'm good idea. This because yeah. people will know the time that it happens, so they can look it into it themselves. Yeah. Um, but there was a lot of like, uh, stories that didn't add up. There, there was people making up bullshit, and there was also there was the one that was the main one was the it was a, a French aircraft, and it was. It gone off course, but the thing is, I don't know what it's like in other countries, but you know, you it's illegal for them to scram for for, for them to do sonic booms uh, unless it is an absolute emergency. Well, this so, is it. This is what baffles me because we, we of course, like yourself, like yourself, you heard the noise. I don't know about you, but I went scrambling outside. What the hell is that noise? Me, the wife, and the kids were. Oh, what the. Yeah, and we heard this pitch black night time, give some context, uh, the sound of a, a jet or something going over, big bang again. But then, I don't know if you remember this, Oliver, Oliver, unless, Oliver, unless you didn't hear this, uh, and the wife's here, and loads of people on the street heard it as well in our area, it, what, it sounded like machine gun fire. The big bang, and then there was a... For about 20 seconds. But that's not a sonic boom, that sounds like gunfire in the air. The next day, uh, woke up, did some Googling, you know, some personal investigation, because it was really bugging me. Uh, turned out, it, it mentioned over Yorkshire, uh, somebody had cited, the, the, believe it or not, you've heard of the app Flight Radar? Yeah. Uh, it might not have been that, actually, I don't know if it was or not, but somebody had put on the track of the, this one of these jets, or one of these objects that went over. It was the jet, wasn't it? The jet, wasn't it? it went over, and what happened, it, was, it flew over Yorkshire, headed towards the North Sea, and circled the North Sea several times. Yeah, I saw that. Just off the coast, yeah. And it's like, well, I jumped to the, uh, to the conclusion that, you know, apparently there's a an alien base underneath the North Sea. I don't know if you've heard that one. You know, it's just like, well, that's my conspiracy. That, well, that's what it is then. You know, but it's just very interesting. Yeah, I mean, the amount of times... I mean, I saw, I saw the radar footage and the amount of times that it circled and circled, yeah. you know, for it just to be a a french airliner that had gone off track was it it, it kind of didn't That's, add up it didn't add up i heard the french uh, the french plane story and also something to do with a russian plane as well there were two conflicting stories at the time but yeah. it's, it's one or the other or none at all you, you know I, it's i think i think as well going back to to your game it's it's stories like these that i think that uh, fuel the imagination. I, that fuel the imagination for people like us. Yeah. Completely. It is. It is. Um, and it can't all be conspiracies. No, what's the uh, what's the somebody put this wonderfully the other day, I read this uh, this quote. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, I can't remember it exactly, but it was there can be only so many conspiracies before it becomes more than likely scientific fact. Oh, so many coincidences before it becomes scientific. That's but that's it. There can be so many coincidences before it becomes scientific fact, yeah. which is true. You have God knows how many coincidences, and the government can keep saying for however long they want. Oh, it's just it's weather balloons. Oh, it's just this. It's a formation of the clouds. It's a weird weather abnormal abnormally. You know what's happened? What well, every time this is when this happens, this happens. A bit of a coincidence. Yeah. Well, well, we're just how many talking. times can that happen before it's? Yeah. 
We were just talking about the New York Times earlier, the fact yeah. that it got retracted, that they have off-world craft, which, so the, like so which, which echoed the, the Roswell uh, story. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. And the New York Times is a reputable paper, so what's going on there? How much of these stories now, all the ones that uh, have, have come into play over the, I would say the last three years, because that's kind of when it's been, it's started to really, and this year's it's heating up. Especially since the, yeah. Go, goes into your game it, that you, that you may not have even known about. Well, this is what I, I briefly touched on it earlier with the whole, the main idea was, because it's changed a lot, like I mentioned before, the game originally it was supposed to be uh, about the grey aliens on the dark side of the moon. Uh, that's been changed. The, the, I don't say too much, but yeah, anyway, forget I'm going to say that. Uh, but uh, it's changed. But it, in terms of what's gone into the game, what's from me, it's like I said, the, the base is on the dark side of the moon is from what I've watched, from what I truly believe in. Uh, a lot of what Alex says, uh, the character of Alex says, is what I believe in. Uh, I'm trying to think now you've worded that the way you did that question, that is there anything subconsciously that I've put in without really quite realising? No, what I'm saying is, um, it, you've, the viewer, the, the gamer, the viewer, the person that plays this, how much of what's happened recently do you think that, that they might think, oh, hang about? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Oliver. Sorry, mate. I don't know. I think I think it depends on the person who's playing. If you, I mean, people like us and indeed you're good viewers, uh, we're into this stuff anyway. So we're more prone to be open and 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 we might think, yeah, that that theory makes sense. I actually can imagine that happening. Or yeah, this this adds up actually. Yeah, from what he's saying there, because of this, I read in an article somewhere. Or you know, I, can, I can't speak for everybody who who plays it. I think it depends on the person who who plays it. Don't really know how to answer that one. No, no, that's, 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 it's an odd question. I'm just wondering. Yeah. I, I literally, I'm just wondering if, like, because this has been so much stuff that has happened over the last it was something that just scared the hell out of me outside. I think it's the cat. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it, it makes the it, It's the subject of the dark side of do, the do, room. Do, 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 do. <laughs> just give me the willies a little bit. <laughs> do you know what you said before, though? When I said. Are you a fan of Pink Floyd? <laughs> mm. Is it well, not really, but uh, I don't that's... mind. It. They named the album "The Dark Side of the Mo- Dark Side of the Moon." Yeah, I wonder if there's a reason a reason behind that, just like the reason behind your game, trying to get the message out there without making it blatantly obvious. Yeah, although mine is, but uh, maybe perhaps. Who knows? Without giving too much away of the game, what do you think is on the dark side of the moon? How do you mean now? Do you mean in the game or... No. (laughs) You personally. What do I believe? I believe they're just... I believe it's the Greys, for a start. That's what I believe it is. Because weren't it... Who was it? Was it Aldrin who went on record saying when they landed on the moon, they were there on on a little... Mound basically telling well, them to well, bugger the off. Thing, the buzz has kind of gone on record saying is that there is. I think you're talking about. Oh, what's his name? I I could, I, I'm probably name. wrong. It's the other guy. But it's not Armstrong. Is it, were it Armstrong? No, 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 it wasn't Armstrong. Oh. No. But Buzz did say that the uh, Phobos, which is the the moon that is. Um, Mars's moon mm. has a monolith on there. I, th- I think I've heard this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it it's it's an odd little interview clip, and he just literally says, "Who put there? Who put that there? Maybe God did." Yeah. Yeah. And if you if you, there is kind of something that looks monolithic on Phobos. Mm. Interesting. So yeah. do you? Do you think these structures that may be on the moon are like kind of the domes and the pyramids? Do you think it's do you think it's like teeming with life, or do you think it's something old? No, I think it's teeming with life. I do, yeah, I do. I do find that there's a very strong connection, clearly, with Egyptians. 
there is with the permis there's a very very strong connection and that's touched upon in the game actually that's one of my theories but uh it's the pyramids there's it hurts my head to you know to try and process this somebody said once one of the theories and you probably know about this yourself that have you ever thought because you know these uh, archaeologists are digging up uh, remains you know and finding items that were only created you know two centuries ago or something which they shouldn't but you know from like that from the 12th century or whenever is whenever back you know these devices that they shouldn't have had back then and somebody said well have you ever considered the possibility and this really got me thinking this that maybe life before us succeeded life grew it progressed they advanced in technology above where we are now and at some point something happened where they were wiped out but life started again and we started from square one so that's why we're finding uh artifacts which seem to be from the future it it does seem to me and i'm i've people that watch my channel a lot that will know that i've always been one to kind of come away from the conspiracies and tr i try not to say too much okay too much nonsense i, I yeah. will say but when when you're touching on stuff like Egyptians and let's um, ancient aliens, I mean, I used to be a massive fan of ancient aliens until I started to do my own research, and then I saw that that you know some of the stuff that is bit that they they, they did do they could do. However, yeah. if I do think there was a civilization back then that because there's pyramids everywhere, there is pyramid. They're not just in Egypt. You know, there's pyramids all over the world. China. Yeah, this is, I mean, we would. I was just on the third phase of moon the other day, we were talking about um, a pyramid in Bosnia, and it was apparently this pyramid is thirty five thousand years old. Jesus, that is. I mean, Giza's what four and a half thousand years old. Mm. So that is ridiculous and th this one guy tried to uh, to dig it up but the the bosnian uh, archaeologist basically tried to stop him doing it right and if there's nothing there what's the what's the problem what's the problem with him digging it up because mm. it's in a mountain mm. but then you can see when he's digging it up when he because he does do some of it you can see that there is you know stuff that's being laid there right so I'm gonna have to look into that myself. Interesting. I, I, I'll I'll send you the link for it. Yeah, please do. Please do. There's definitely. I think that there may have been a civilization that was way, way, way more advanced than any period of time. And I don't know if there was more advanced than us now, but if they were that advanced then, what are they now? If they're still about? Yeah. Very good question. And going, touching back on what you mentioned earlier about ancient aliens, that wasn't really what I was basing my, my theories on. I've watched other things as well. But, I mean, at the end of the day, ancient aliens, when a series has gone on for, is it on season 17 or something crazy now? When you get to that point, you start, you start thinking how much of this stuff now is real because they still want a show, so let's make some crap up now to keep going. You know, it's a bit... Do you know what I mean? No offence to any fans out there. No, it's, it's, it's entertaining. I do like That's it. It's entertainment. It's just... Yeah. Uh, I just sometimes shake my head up and think. It's actually why I very, very rarely watch mainstream documentaries on this kind of topic. Because I know they can be controlled, so to speak. Or, you know, it, I'd rather watch fan-made documentaries on YouTube, to be honest. Because I know the heart's there and they have done the yeah. proper research, you know. And it's, it's well, most of the time. Uh, some of them are ridiculous. Let's, get, let's be straight. But a lot of them are very eye-opening and make, just make you think. You know, it might not be 100% true, but it just make you think things. You usually find the ones with the least amount of views. Yeah. Uh, the the long ones, and you, and you look into them, they're actually speaking a lot of sense. Yeah, very deep. It's not necessarily the most exciting thing they're talking yeah. about. But, but if you've got the patience to watch it, you might actually, you know, become quite enlightened by it. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'd rather watch stuff like that than mainstream documentaries. One of the... One of, I always ask people this... And we briefly spoke about this because um, you did mention Bob Lazar. Yeah. And was that kind of because you you were on about inspirations for you to making this film? 
uh, making the game. I keep calling uh, it Fat Fire, mate, because it because it looks I mean, that good. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it was thank you. It wasn't. He's not the main reason. He's, he's part of you know doing my YouTube research. Of course, Bob. Everybody knows Bob Lazar, but it's just. And I do believe Bob Lazar. I do. I genuinely. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. That I put my opinion is he's telling this guy's telling the truth. What's your opinion on that, by the way? I, I I've tried to to say that he's not telling the truth. My I've tried to get into to to think now nah, it's all the guy's talking rubbish. Right. But every time I watch him, every time I see his mannerisms, to me it that's looks that's the guy that is telling the truth. That and you've just touched on something very important. You seem to be the same as me. I'm very good uh, <clears throat> body language. Uh, I, 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 you know what I mean I can you can spot the signs you know you can read people and it that's what it was for me exactly the same what you just said his body language the way he blinks the way he glances everything saying to me he's telling the truth that's it's why not just, that's my opinion it's not just that it's how famous could have he have I mean what when did he come out with that story it was like in the 80s how famous could he have he he, he disappeared for years yeah and it's only recently just I mean, he kind of is the person that blew the lid off Area 51 for a start. Yeah, you know, There's yeah. so much information he knew that... It... He he wasn't the sole uh, reason for... Pardon me, he wasn't the sole reason for Dark Side. It's just elements of that, you know, that whole wondrous world of the unknown or the mysterious, you know, which drew me in. Uh, he, I, I took elements from certain bits, you know, to create a story and basically just the, the initial idea you know the initial world i was trying to create you know just what if everything we've been told isn't the truth what if we've been lied to what if there are things out there that you know are a danger to us are, are a threat to us but we're just not being told you know that kind of aspect of, that's what i brought into the game a lot you know that kind of thing do you think they're a threat well that's i personally don't well it depends don't say it? it depends because you can't say they they what you know i don't know which which breed of alien you which species of alien you're referring to uh greys not at all not at all so you uh, think there's others i think that my mind's gone blank of the bloody names of them uh is it the nords the uh, the, the blondies <laughs> oh the, the nordics nordic uh, tall greys and the nordic blondes yeah, Nordic Blondes, that's it. And I believe they're friendly. Uh, the Reptilian ones, I, I, I believe they could be... I believe they could be buggers if they wanted to be. Oh, that's what uh, David Icke says. Yeah, David Icke, there's a... Yeah, okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> moving swiftly on. Moving straight on, yeah. I love him. I absolutely... Honestly, he's my guilty pleasure. It really why, is. Why, why is that? Why is he guilty pleasure? Well, I think I know why. Yeah, it's just... Because it's that absurd, you're just like, my God, this is great entertainment. No, I think, I think if you watch him, forget all the reptilian stuff and the Queen's a lizard. Yeah. Uh, but if you this? watch him speaking now, see, he won't, he, he, he doesn't even mention the reptilians. He's kind of like, he's, he's, he's gone away from that. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I, 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 it's just how he speaks about the world today. I think he nails it. <laughs> I haven't you know, seen any of his recent stuff, to be honest. Yeah, well, just, mate, he's easily... Didn't he get, uh, didn't he get uh, laughed off a chat show? Yeah, he got yeah. laughed off... off um, Wogan. God rest, God rest his soul. Yeah, Terry Wogan. Yeah. Terry got him back on. Oh. And when oh, when he went, when, when Ike went back on, he was very kind of like, fuck you, Terry, you know, I, I'm... You know, last time you had me on, you made, you made a, you're not taking the piss this time. I'm yeah. ruling this time. Uh, and I do love Wogan as well. Got, yeah. Like I say, yeah. got Sorry, uh, Wogan. Uh, that's a good, good impression of that, mate. <laughs> that's the first time I've done it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's. I, I, I don't. I don't know about the whole reptilian thing. You know, no. I'd need to see. It, you see all these videos where people will say. I get them sent to me all the time. Look at this guy's eyes. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, what, that, See, that, that's Chandler Bing from, from Jumping <laughs> Friends. He's not a reptile. The thing, when I say reptiles, I, I don't mean the ones like, let's say, our good friend David I, you know, would say, 
Well, the Queen's one. I don't mean I mean the actual not the ones he's claiming on Earth who are reptilians. You know, I don't I don't I believe there's two different kinds. I believe there's a reptilian uh alien I can hear that noise, so it's just the church bell going off in the background. Uh reptilian aliens, but I don't believe they're here on Earth on, on Earth. On Earth masquerading as human beings. I think that's uh, I think that's pushing it a little bit for my beliefs. You mean like camouflaging themselves and showing themselves as a yeah, but he's, he's, it sounds straight out of V, the series, you know, that kind of thing. It's a bit too, it's a bit too convenient that the yeah. idea has been done in a TV series. So people have said, well, let's start this rumour that, you know, the Queen's a, a, a reptile. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's... Well, I mean, if you look at the actual, the, the thing with it that I find intriguing that I do believe is that there is evidence that people have kind of made statues of uh, lizards that are upright in, in a human, human form. form. You can see that they've made statues of that. Okay. Whether that is just like um, back in the day they had like lizard masks because they worshipped I don't know, a lizard or whatever, you know. Yeah, or mythical gods that happen to look like lizards, whatever. It could be anything. We'll interpretate that as a different way. Well, yeah. One of the aliens that I definitely think is a thing is the greys. Yeah, definitely, 100%. 100%, because there is too many people that have told me stories. I've, I've, yeah. seen, I've <laughs> seen it go back years and years and years. Yeah. There's well, people that will argue with that and say, you know, that, that these cave paintings where people was drawing them were just bad drawings. You know, they were just over exaggerating the eyes and this, that and the other. And of, of course, there's no, it's, I don't believe that. I'm, I'm with you on this one, Ollie. Uh, there's also the strange facts that, I mean, a, a lot of it, it there's the belief that uh, the media started depicting grey aliens in movies, comic books, TV commercials, whatnot, to, to condition our minds. Uh, to be prepared for when they do show you must have heard this because the question i want to ask is if greys don't exist then how come every single body knows what one looks like yeah it is it's kind of like it's common knowledge isn't it's, it? All of yeah them. exactly it's crazy when you think about it like that so everybody knows say they don't exist everybody knows damn well what they look like you know it's and like i say is that because that is what they look like because I believe they do pretty much look like that. But there was one. I, I don't. Do you know, for uh, for example, when it all first started, the the first imagery of a grey. Do you know when that was? Well, there's 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 the, the well the first imagery imagery is is the cave paintings, right? Of what? But whether they're greys or not, I don't know. For all I know, they could just be uh, they could just be guys with big have, heads. No, the, the, you know, like the know it alls the tribal masks with the maybe big holes there. Yeah, yeah, that's what it could be. But uh, it's the stories that intrigue me, the stories that people have told me, the stories where, like you said, like yourself, you you saw something in your room, you don't know if it was a dream or not. That's fair enough, and, and I appreciate the honesty there, mate. But I've 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 had, I've had I had a guy on um, a few weeks ago. And it was honestly the most intriguing interview that I've ever done where, you know, he saw two, two creatures outside his window and this, this guy did not want to come on. He did not want to come on this show whatsoever. I had to say to him, look, nobody's going to find it. I'm not going to show you picture in the thumbnail or anything like that. Mm. No one's going to know who you are. You know, we'll just call you first name. <sighs> Right, I'm, not, an audio I'm not a famous YouTuber, you know, you're not going to get... I said, it'll do you good to come on and tell this story because he sent me this long email with... And normally when I get sent a long email because I'm dyslexic, still, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll look at it and I'll think, oh, God, I've got to read all that. But I was, int I, I was loving reading every bit of yeah. that email because I was like... They, you, you could just tell that it had been written by somebody that was telling a real story. Yeah. And I just said, listen... I need you to come on the show. And he says, I was just telling you my story. I just wanted to tell you my story. Because, uh, you know, no, nobody else. I, I don't have anybody to tell the story yeah, to. That yeah. doesn't, won't think I'm crazy type thing. Oh, he came on and literally every. And I put the video up live. Everybody in the chat was like, 
oh my god, this guy's telling the truth. Oh, yeah. Even my mates who I uh, who I go out with, you know, like Colton, that mm. was like they watched it and they're like, holy shit, I believe this guy. You know, they don't check really... this out. Submit submit link after this. I'll, 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 I'll check link, that out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but. But this guy saw two greys outside his window. There's I more to the story than that, but I won't spoil it for you. Yeah, uh, it's, always, it's always greys, always greys. Exactly, always greys. Is there any greys in the game? Next question. <laughs> That's a secret one, then. <laughs> You've got you to play the game to find out, folks. I like your style, does. <laughs> um, so, the game... you. you the game is with the publishers now. No, not yet. Uh, not for a week or so. Right. Just putting the finishing touches, putting the icing on the cake, so to speak, and be winging it off over to them. Yeah, within a week. Yeah, I saw a, a video on your YouTube channel, which I will link in the description, <laughs> where you, you were you were talking about the credits being so important. You know, the, the, end, the end credits, you said... You, I might have been drunk. Uh, no, they are, yeah. Uh, yeah no, you, you, I think you did have a beer in your hand. Yeah, I probably did. Yeah, that's usually when I do other video updates. You said, I'm just working on the credits, but the credits, you know, you, you said you, you, you needed some yeah. time to kind and, of... And that's that's tying in with our good mutual uh, friend, Adam Press, yeah. who, who nailed this, this terrific score, which is just so... Whoa, it's powerful, it's epic, it's just amazing. And the end credits are important because... They leave people after the story's over. If they if they're done wrong, or should I say if they're done right, then people are more inclined to want more. If that makes sense, you've got a, a post credit scene in some films or games, you know, and that seems to be the thing now. Have you noticed a lot of films nowadays have a post credit scene? You know, you sit in the cinema for seven eight minutes while the credits roll, and then watch a five minute scene afterwards. Uh, and if you nail that right, if you leave the audience wanting more. You know, you've done your job well. Whether there will be more or not, who really knows? But if you leave them wanting more, that's the best way to be. So, yeah, the, the end credits are very important, in my opinion. Yeah. But Adam Press, whew, what a genius that man is. Yes, yeah, I was just saying. Yeah. So, so uh, an old friend of mine, at, at, John um, and, and does, um, musical genius, it, w when he was 16 years old, he was literally, he'd, he'd just invite me into... To, to to record some stuff while we I, I think we, I don't think we were drinking beer at the time I don't know what, we may have been at 12 but, but <laughs> literally just pull something out and it, it, it I, choose your words I carefully it's like he's like a Yorkshire Moby <laughs> Yorkshire Moby that's brilliant <laughs> I don't know if you'll thank me for that or not <laughs> got more hair than Moby, definitely. He's, he's sound though, and but he's a true gentleman as well. He's a really lovely guy. He really he, is. He is, he is very he's talented, top bloke. Um, yes. No, I can't wait. Um, is it? Can you say anything in terms of? Is is it open to to maybe anything after? It, it, is there another project? Maybe something different. Let's <laughs> look at the life. Hang on. Uh, the is it depends on the ending you get. It's a it's a multi choice. There's 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 variable endings at the end depending on the choices the player made throughout the game. Yeah. Uh, and it depends on that, which leads to some difficulty when it comes to doing a sequel if there was to be one. Uh, so if there was, yeah, what was she, she got to have? You'd have to have it kind one, of one finale ending. You think one definite ending. So what we've done. If in well, the idea is if there is a sequel, uh, it would start off with a series of questions, much like an interactive question thing at the beginning. Did this happen? Did that happen? Yes, no, ne yes, no questions. And then it would know where to start it from, if that makes sense. So, so you know what I mean? there is many endings to this game. Not many. There's enough. There's enough. Yeah. 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 Sorry, mate. I'm asking you to give. No, it's he's, he's fine. It's Joe. You know, it's actually fun trying to. It's it's fun to be in a situation. I've got to wear my way out of. It's <laughs> no, it's it's, it's fun. the thing is though, and this is what I like about you, Daz. Not just as a as as an old friend, but you Stop don't say no. Well, it was the same age, mate. You don't like I say we we we, we age well. We're like a fine wine. Um. 
but the the way you you've done this, and I and I can I'll I will say to my guys, go check up the, check out the Twitter page. I'll leave the link below. Check out the YouTube page. You've been so honest with the development of this game, which is and I, I as a gamer a little bit now, not as much as I used to yeah. game, but I don't get time. But as someone who really likes games. I get sick of all the developers that just fucking lie through the teeth and they don't kind of speak. You, you don't, you speak loads to, to, to you, to the people who are supporting the game. Ah, oh, yeah. You, that, that's, you're that's, letting that's, them know every step of the way what you're doing. Yeah. That's the target audience. And they need to be treated with respect, you know, because these are the people who are ultimately going to be the ones playing, purchasing and playing your game. What you've, sweat your bollocks off on working on you know so and you know that's not i'm not saying that's false i'm not doing it to be false in any way no, i no, love no. i love communicating with the, with the people who are interested with the potential players i love that aspect of it you know i find that more fun than the whole coding process you know i'd rather speak to people which is why i'm on social media a lot because i love that aspect of it all yeah it just it shows the, that you've got a lot of confidence in what you've what you've created You've got to have confidence. If you don't believe in your own product, then nobody else is going to as well. You know that sounds cliche, but you, you've got to, you've got to be confident, and you? you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to. Yeah, you do, mate. This, honestly, mate, I I, I really admire something like this because I I know how long you've been into doing film and. Uh, you know, I know you. I know you had a previous game beforehand. Yeah, and, and this this to me seems like your baby. I mean, you've put your you put your day job to the side <laughs> to just focus on delivering this this project. Yeah, just hope it pays off. <laughs> Otherwise, it's been one big fat waste. But uh, yeah, it is my baby. It is my baby. It's it's one of them things where I'm always open. Uh, to input from outside from from actors from people who are working on the game you know whatever i'm always open to other people's opinions of what they think a certain character for example should act like or how this situation should play out but i'm always very careful to make sure that i stick to the world that i've because it's my baby you know i want it to be my vision you know of what i believe is happening and otherwise it's pointless that's the idea you know it's my story it needs to be put across so but i'm always open to listening but it's got it's at the end of the day it's always got to be you know in my that sounds really big headed my way or the highway no i don't mean it like that i mean you know just yeah it's got to be a certain vision yeah and this <laughs> this and the dark side of the moon is available on is it is it every platform is it available on everything yeah it'll be on ps4 first when it's released it'll be ps4 xbox uh, one steam switch and then hopefully later on ios and android is it harder to develop for to to, to get it over to ios and android every everything has to be part of the publishers just want a, a windows build from me and uh, then they'll they'll do the porting but there is yeah it's technical each each you know each console each wherever it's aim it, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be difficult yeah there'll be hurdles to jump so to speak but it's it should be okay because it's essentially just a series of video clips that play when a certain event happens or you know uh, will there be just one version of the game? Or are you going to have like a, a special edition or anything like that? Or is it just? I'm going to do a special edition where the character of Dean just walks around naked for no reason. No, uh, no, <laughs> no. I haven't thought of that. It's a good question. I haven't thought of that now. I haven't yeah. thought of that at all, so I can't really answer that. But no, that's a good idea though. Thank I, you. I, I, I would just think <laughs> with the score. You know, you see some good special editions that have like the the soundtrack. Well, the soundtrack. Again, plugging Adam Press here, uh, and rightfully so, he deserves it. Uh, the soundtrack's going to be released separately. Right. Yeah. But now you mess, I'm, yeah, I'm sure we could do a bundle with a game and soundtrack and sort something out there for licensing, but yeah. Awesomeness. Yeah. Well, mate, it, we've been going for about, about an hour now, but before we do go, um, I just want to ask you, um, in terms of who... Who who right now, uh, the people that you're watching, the stuff that you're watching out there, f for you, who's got the most credibility? 
that, that you I, I know you're not like you said this to be before that you know and don't worry about your answer but I, i'm intrigued to know who are the people who are influencing you when it comes to the subject of aliens and ufos it is actually the, the two obvious ones bob lazar and uh stephen greer those are the two yeah those are the two for me greer god bless him i love him greer. I, 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 I absolutely love Stephen Gray. People think I don't like him, but I do like. <laughs> but he's the most is the most muscular toned ex surgeon I know. I mean, he's just like Wah. I search for aliens. Look at me. He's, he's huge. The man's yeah, he's a beast. He's, I think if I stood next to Gray, I'd, I'd like come up to his fire or something like that. <laughs> yeah, it's just huge. Yeah, uh, give Annie a challenge. We were speaking before. You need to check TTSA out. Um, yes, I'll, send me I'll, all this stuff. I'll send you some, yeah, do that, some, mate. That'd be great. That'd be great. But Greer hates them. Um, mm. But yeah, um, the the Bob Lazar stuff uh, is, for me is. I'm I just, I just don't them. see how anybody. Can, I see so many people trying to kind of just say he's full of shit. I just don't. I, I, I mean, did you did you watch the Joe Rogan interview? Was that the recent one? Well, we, it was quite recent. It was. Is that long. the one where we were raided by the FBI at the end? Bob Lazar apparently did get ra- raided by the FBI. Yeah, yeah. that was one of the documentaries I watched. It probably is the same. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I'm not well, sure about that. Yeah, Joe Rogan interview is fantastic, and Joe Rogan, um, he he used to debunk. All sorts of UFO stuff, that, uh, mysteries and paranormal stuff. He, he he put it all to bed. I mean, Joe Rogan for a long time didn't actually believe that we went to the moon. Then he changed his tune, and then um, he I I thought if anybody's going to not believe Bob Lazar and try and you know pull him down a peg or two, it might be Joe Rogan. And he went on and. The guy was just gobsmacked by the story. Well, what does that say? You know, it's like we said earlier. You could just tell. You, you can tell when people are telling the truth and when they're talking crap. You can tell if you've got half a brain. So you can usually tell, can't you? You know, and it's yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Everything I've seen of him from interviews in the eighties to modern stuff, he's always kept. He's always his story's been exactly the same. From what I've seen, nothing's ever changed throughout. Nothing's contradicted itself. Nothing. There's been no red flags where you think, "Hang on a minute, that's not what you said before." There's been none of that. It's it's just the look in his eye, everything. It just seems to be pure honesty. You know, it's like, what's he getting out of it if he's talking shit? I don't I don't get that. Well, well apparently, he's not made a hell of a lot off the back of this. He's got his own. Go. He's, got, he's got his own company called uh, United Nuclear. Yeah, he's absent, yeah. And, you know, he, the guy is a, is a fucking genius. He's a genius. Yeah, he is. He, is. He, yeah. He, he just, uh, he recently he made, um, I mean, it's not that impressive, I suppose, because I suppose it can be done, but he just built his mate, Jeremy Corbell, a, a laser gun. And this laser gun just, can literally just burn through anything. It's like, fucking just, like, just like that. Just, just like, it's like, saying, oh, you know, like, oh, yeah, I'll make you a laser gun. There you yeah. go. Cheers, Rob. You're welcome, mate. Yeah. But yeah, the, <laughs> Greer. I like Greer. I just think the guy's he he he's very much you know come and give me some money. I'll take it's you. Become an enterprise. I'll take. I'll, and he probably you know he he probably believes very much in it, and he's done it. He has done a yeah, lot. I believe he does. Yeah. I know. I know where you're coming from though, because it's, it's something I believe in as well. I think I, I did notice in his latest documentary. It seems to be. More or less an advertisement for his business rather than anything else. I don't blame him for that, though. Mm. Because, I mean, with my channel for a start, if I, if I can make some money off the back of doing something I oh, love, then fair enough. But I think Greer, back before 9-11, was on fire. Yeah. And I'd like, to see, I'd like to see Greer go back to that. Classic Greer. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Darren, my friend, thank you very much for coming on Alien Addict. And you, uh, you just are welcome. Before, before you go, just give us a last um, introduction to your new game, and let everybody know where they can buy it for anybody that might have missed it before. 
Right, yo, the dark side of the moon. It's called. It'll be available on PS4, Xbox One, uh, Steam, that's PC, Mac, uh, and Switch, and later on Android and iOS. It'll be available in the next three to four months, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, it's a horror, thriller, sci fi adventure. So, yeah, go and buy it and enjoy. If anybody's watching this now uh, and it, it and it's already out, I'll I'll link in the description below. <laughs> nice one, cheers. Because yeah. yeah. I like that. Thinking about the future, that's that's good. Definitely, yeah. the future's yeah. bright. Yeah, the future's orange. Knowing in the states will get that. <laughs> <laughs> they won't. Well, it just does. Well, they might. Well. It may have been a thing. They might. The... They've got Donald Trump. They'll get the orange reference, surely. So who knows? <laughs> Taz, thank you very much for coming on Alien Addict. Good night, God bless, folks. Mind the bugs, don't bite. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to leave all the links below uh, for Daz's Twitter and uh, the YouTube channel. Thank you, my friend. Secrets. We all have them. Some bigger and darker than others. But a secret's still a secret. Something we hide, something we hide from ourselves, something we hide from the outside world. Do you want to know my secret? I can find out all your secrets with just the click of a button, if I wanted to. Maybe I already have. scary, isn't it? I would be scared. So should you.